Hey guys, I'm here with another reading lesson, and we've been talking a lot about how to figure out tricky words, but figuring out tricky words is not the only way that we can take charge of our reading and be the boss of our reading, um, and it's not our only job as a reader. Actually, there's a much bigger and more important job to do, and that is working hard to understand your books, um, because if you don't understand what's going on in your book, you'll be very confused. Um, so you have to stop and ask yourself, am I getting it? And if you don't understand something, you have to go back and reread and um, work hard to understand what's going on and how all the pieces fit together. I have a chart under uh, reading extras that's called tools for understanding our books. And um, that's the chart that we'll be using now. So today is the first lesson, and um, you'll see on the chart it says, check that you're getting it. Check that you're getting it. So I'm going to model with a few books. Um, I have the book Nate the Great, Tardy Tortoise. Now, if I open up to um, page 18, it says, I gave him a piece of pancake. He took a little bite. He's talking to the tortoise now. We're talking about the tortoise because Nate found this tortoise. And he said, I gave him a piece of pancake. He took a little bite. Your owner must wonder where you are. And when you're coming home, I said, you're one tardy tortoise. Hmm. Well, what if I don't know what the word tardy is? I might work to understand that. Well, he found this tortoise and the tortoise is in at home. And he said, your owner must wonder where you are and when you're coming home. Maybe tardy means he wasn't um, there when he was supposed to be. Maybe he was late. Now, if I keep reading the story and I go to the end when uh, Nate found his owner, the, the, um, when Nate found the um, tortoise's owner, the owner said, Speedy, that's the tortoise, did you escape under the fence again? You're late for lunch. And so that tells me that um, tardy does mean he was late. It's called the tardy tortoise. He was late for lunch, okay? Um, another thing that was a little bit confusing that I have to stop and think, am I getting it in this book, is is when um, Nate found the tortoise's home and how he found it, the clues that he found. Um, so he said, we went to the next yard. He was going to all the neighbor's yards to find out if the tortoise had eaten the flowers. Um... And um, when, when the tortoise ate the flowers, there was a little U-shape out of the flowers. So he said, we went to the next yard. It was a mess. I saw pieces of flowers, pieces of weeds, pieces of grass. The yard had been bitten to death. Sludge and I looked at each other. I, Nate the Great, say that the tortoise must have eaten many meals in this yard. This must have been his favorite restaurant. And suddenly I knew why. Now let me think, am I getting that? Why? Why would he have eaten so much in this yard? And why would this yard, of all the yards they went to, been his favorite restaurant? Hmm, let me read on and see if I can figure it out. I saw the fence with a sign on it, beware of the tortoise. Well, why would this yard have a sign that said beware of the tortoise? I opened the box, I spoke to the tortoise, welcome home, I said. The case is solved, and I took the tortoise out of the box. And then we come to the page. Suddenly, a lady came from the fence, and she ran toward us. Speedy, did you escape under the fence again? You're late for lunch. And he says, lunch, I thought. The tortoise never stopped eating breakfast. I handed Speedy to the lady. Sludge's tail drooped. He was sorry to see Speedy go. So I'm going to stop and think, wow. So this, this, um, this yard had beware of the tortoise, so she probably had that sign there because that's where the tortoise lived and he ate so much in that yard I think because that's the yard he spent the most time in so that's where he ate the most food and was probably his favorite place but do you see how I stopped and and thought about what was happening in the story I stopped to think about what was happening in the story another book is Henry and Mudge get the cold shivers and now Henry was sick in bed, um, and it says that when Henry was sick, his parents brought him all kinds of goodies, and his, I think his mom brought him crackers, and then his father brought him um, 
His father brought him some comic books and more crackers. And guess who liked the crackers? Mudge. So then it says Mudge loves sick days. But even though he loved Henry's sick days, no one ever thought that Mudge could get sick. No one ever thought that Mudge could catch germs, but he could. And one day he caught a lot of them. And when Henry woke up and jumped out of bed, Mudge didn't move. He didn't get up and he didn't lick Henry's face. So I know that Mudge is not feeling good, but, and he ate a lot of crackers. So I'm thinking maybe he has an upset tummy. But what does that have to do with germs? Because it says, no one ever thought that Mudge could catch germs, but he could. And one day he caught a lot of them. Hmm. So I need to read on and think about what's going on with Mudge. He didn't shake Henry's hand, and he always shook his hand in the morning. He just looked at Henry and wagged his tail. He wasn't feeling good. Mm -hmm. And then if I continue to read the story, um, it says something's wrong with Henry. Mudge must be sick, said Henry. And his mother nodded her head again. Mudge, said Henry, are you just wanting some crackers? But Mudge didn't want crackers. Mudge was sick, and he didn't even read comic books. So... Mudge didn't want the crackers, and then they tried to take him to the doctor, and he didn't want to go. And then if you read on, finally, he went to the doctor, and the doctor checked him out. And it turned out that Mudge had a cold, so that's why he, um, they were talking about germs. So it wasn't the crackers. But I had to stop and think, wow, am I getting this? What's going on here? And I had to stop, and sometimes you have to read on. Sometimes you have to go back and reread like I showed you. I'm reading about the germs. Hey, wait a minute. It said germs, but he ate a lot of crackers. So does that mean he has a stomach ache? Sometimes you have to go back and think about it. You have to reread. Or sometimes you have to read on or, or, or read around the part that you're confused about. And that will give you more details. So remember, whenever you read, you always need to check in with yourself and ask yourself the question, am I getting it? And if you're not getting it, you need to stop. You need to go back and reread, or you need to maybe read on a little bit and see if you can figure it out. And then you need to check in again with yourself because if you don't stop and figure everything out, you're just gonna get more and more confused. One way that you can also think about um, uh, understanding your books or work on understanding your books is to make a prediction about what's going to happen next. Um, it makes you, That makes you stop and think think about what's going to happen on the next page because that forces you to stop and think about what's going on in the story make sure that you look at that chart under reading extras called tools for understanding our books you can even print out a copy if you want and make sure that you're stopping along the way while you're reading and ask yourself am i getting am i getting it what's going on in this story am i understanding it okay i'll see you next time bye